Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this video, we'll quickly summarize the evolution of humans from 4 to 1.8 million years ago and the temporal ranges of various early humans. Africa was the place to be during this period of time, as early human ancestors had not left the continent. However, the continent was occupied not by one lineage, but several competing lineages of early humans. Australopithecus, also synonymized with Paranthropus, lived across a wide swath of East Africa, from South Africa to Ethiopia. The genus can be found ranging from four to two million years ago and lived in the open habitats near the forest edge. Australopithecus, unlike other apes, was bipedal, and could move between forests in the open savanna if needed. The most famous specimen of Australopithecus is Lucy, discovered in 1974. Another equally famous specimen is the Tong baby, a juvenile skull described by Raymond Dart in South Africa. Numerous specimens, particularly in South Africa and Ethiopia, have been found in the last few decades where once a poor record of this period of time has been slowly filled in with numerous fossils. Australopithecus was tiny, with an adult height of just three and a half feet, which meant that adults were about the size of four or five-year-old modern humans. This nimble size meant that Australopithecus, unlike the larger great apes of the Miocene, was a pretty small component of the fauna, and had to deal with the many carnivorous mammals eager to eat them up. There's no evidence that Australopithecus used tools, and recent restudy of the Lucy specimen indicates a broken arm, which may have resulted from falling out of a tree. Likely trees were still providing protection and shelter for Australopithecus. Australopithecus was not the only early human-like fossil known from 4 to 1.8 million years ago. Around 1.9 to 1.4 million years ago, in northeastern Africa, there was another genus, Paranthropus. Paranthropus was slightly bigger, about four and a half feet tall, about the size of a six or eight-year-old uh, modern human. Paranthropus also differed in having large sagittal crest, and very broad teeth that are highly worn, but with robust enamel. And the first specimen was discovered by uh, Mary Leakey in 1959, and her work on the fossil, early fossil humans in East Africa with her husband, Louis Leakey, led to many other discoveries, including the fossilized trackway that I mentioned in a previous video. Recent study of Paranthropus um, isotopes in the teeth indicate that it was likely living on a diet of grasses and leaves or other C4 plants. Although it sometimes is called the nutcracker man, the genus was likely a group that specialized in shearing grasses and leaves as a large part of its diet and may have been completely vegetarian Living alongside both uh, Australopithecus and Paranthropus was a third genus, Homo, our own genus, in the form of the species Homo habilis. Homo habilis lived between 2.3 and 1.4 million years ago in a narrow region of East Africa. The species was about four feet tall, about the size of a six-year-old. Homo habilis had the largest brain of the three and appears to have made rudimentary stone tools, hence it's called the handyman. The best specimens come from Old Divide Gorge in Tanzania. Now there's another remarkable species of Homo that's found in South Africa called Homo nodali, which was discovered in a cave Thousands of individual specimens have been collected from the cave, which is called the Rising Star, and the total number of individuals has not yet been determined since the site has not been totally excavated yet. But currently there are 15 individuals at least known from the cave site. 
Now, dates are not known from the cave, but it's believed to be between two and one million years old. The fossils were discovered in the back chamber in the cave in 2013, with the full description and excavation led by Lee Berger, uh, teaming up with a, an amazing group of scientists from around the world. When the site was reported to Lee Berger by cavers, um, he realized that he himself could not fit into the back chamber, and so he posted an ad on Facebook for people with caving experience and anthropology to help in the excavation. It was one of the first major discoveries of early humans, broadcasted live using social media, uh, in describing the fossils, teams of scientists from around the world participated in the description of the fossils, and the paper was published for free online, and I've provided a link to the paper below. The site is bizarre in being a mass death site and having so many individuals found there. It is believed that the chamber may have been used as a burial site or that the bodies were dumped into the cave. All the recovered bones in the chamber belong to Homo, and likely the passage was as difficult to get into back then as it is today. The lack of a date has a lot of people eager to see how old the site is and where it fits within human evolution. It's likely to be older than one million years. All of these early humans, Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and Homo, lived during this interval of time in Africa and may have had contact with each group. Both Australopithecus and Paranthropus disappeared about 1.5 million years ago, with Homo habilis and possibly Homo nautili living until 1 million years ago. Around this time, about 1.5 million years ago, a new species of Homo appeared, Homo erectus. Homo erectus was the first human species to leave the African continent for Europe and Asia. In the next video, we'll look at the wanderings of Homo erectus and later species of Homo, including Homo sapiens. For now, be sure to review the evolution of humans from 4 to 1.8 million years ago and the temporal ranges of various early humans in Africa. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Utah State University Geology Program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjaminslashburger.org. Links are found in the description below.